Uh, we had a great time. You know, um, we're supposed to be giving our testimonies tonight, and uh, mine doesn't directly relate to camp, but uh, it goes over an event that happened over last year. And uh, growing up, I uh, was raised in a Christian household. I was in a Christian school from the time I was four to twelve. Um, For a while there, it got to the point where it's not hard to put on an act, as if you are saved. I remember mom, whenever I was little, always telling me you need to be saved if you want to be able to go to heaven and uh, be with your family. Well, eventually, after hearing it so much, I thought, well, I'll just go on. And maybe I will be saved. And uh, my brother Scott was preaching here. I walked the aisle, said a prayer, and uh, got baptized. But I always had doubts afterwards. Um, this last November, as much of you probably know, I had a bad heart accident. And, uh, The events of that night forever changed my life. I remember waking up from a dream thinking that maybe that never even happened. And I was feeling like, well, thank God, this just might have been just a nightmare. And uh, then I looked up and I saw my windshield and was severely cracked. I really couldn't move that well. My neck was hurt real bad, and I felt a bad pain in my side. So I realized I had been in a car accident, and I was just thinking, what am I going to tell my dad? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I looked up, and I put my hands on the steering wheel. Didn't realize how bad it was at first. And I saw that they were be drenched in my blood. And it hit me right then that I might be in something that I could not get out of. So afterwards, I tried and opened the door and I realized I can't. Throughout my life, whenever I've had something hit me real hard or something like that, I always try to walk it off or something like that, but I couldn't get out of the truck. Um, I kept passing out, and I guess it was because I was losing so much blood. But one of the things I do remember from being in that is uh, I woke up to John Richard talking to me. And uh, I, could, I can be honest right here, I never felt so glad to hear his voice in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I couldn't really stay awake, I couldn't hardly see him. Uh, there was a man who climbed up in the back of my truck or around me somewhere, I'm not really sure. And he asked me simple questions on what to say. And just trying to put everybody at ease for the moment, I said yes, of course. And uh, then I asked about how the people in the other car were, and they said they were okay. After that, I kind of blacked out for a little bit. And the next thing I remember, I was in an ambulance. <coughs> and I remember laying there feeling so helpless, thinking, is this the last time I'm having to mess up? I'm about to lose everything. Where am I going to go? No going back. So I thought I've had doubts for this long. I ain't <laughs> terrified. So I didn't know how much longer I was going to be. I couldn't stay awake for it to be able to do anything. So in the ambulance, I remember just laying there and praying over and over. God, just please forgive me. 
place up my parents, my siblings, my family all together, my friends. I know this was going to be hard if I did go. Um, whenever they finally got me out of the ambulance after I woke up for probably maybe fifth or sixth time, um, they were wheeling me to a helicopter. All, at first, I saw my brother. I wasn't expecting to, and I was really grateful to see him. Then I saw my dad and my mom run up, and uh, <coughs> I couldn't help but bust into tears. I told my mom, I'm so sorry for what happened. Um, they loaded me up in the helicopter, and uh, I just remember feeling kind of safe, I guess, afterwards. After I asked him to forgive me, it was just sort of a feeling of calmness in me. Like I wasn't scared anymore. I just accepted it and I was ready to go. Whenever they wheeled me to the ER, I was on the top of this building, in LSU, S, Street, or whatever. And uh, I remember one thing about that moment is it was raining. I could feel the, feel the raindrops hit my face. And right then I knew everything was going to be okay, no matter what happened. Well, when I went, after they got through all the procedures and the ER, they uh, wheeled me into this room and I saw my sister. And I, I'm honestly say I was scared I wasn't going to get to see her. She was there for me and she held my hand and she told me it was going to be okay. She didn't shed a tear, she was being a rock for me. And it meant a lot back then because I had never been so scared in my life. But that night, mom tells me I told her that I remember feeling like somebody laying beside me in my bed. I, I, right now I do not remember that. but. Uh, I guess what I'm truly trying to say is I had this feeling growing up that I was going to be able to have a family uh, role experience what most people dream too own a house have a good job but that night it clicked with me there's no telling when you're about to go I always think was going to put off being saved because I, after I got to Darwin Woods, I kind of got a little corrupted and started doing things that I shouldn't have. And I would have felt guilty doing those things and being saved. I had that odd mindset to it. But uh, I thought it wouldn't be much longer. I could just be patient, and eventually I would save and get right in my life how I should. It don't work like that. I didn't expect I had a wreck that night. Um, I was severely lucky, blessed. I got a second chance. Last night we were watching this movie called Booby. And um, at the beginning of it, it said there was a boy in a car wreck, 16 years old, and the was on fire. And it got me thinking real deep about how they were telling me right after my wreck, if my truck would have caught on fire, there would have been no way they would have gotten me out in time. And if I could show y'all a picture of the truck, I would, but I mean, it's amazing how the truck completely just folded in on the opposite side of me. And I wasn't more really scared of hurt than I was. Um, just take time to think. Are y'all ready to go tonight?
if we knew that if afterwards you walk out that door, you're about to go maybe get in a car wreck or maybe you would stop to get gas or something, someone shot you over some money or whatever. I mean, there's no telling when we're going to die, how we're going to die, what's going to happen. So my chance This is probably the most important thing you'll ever do. And afterwards, you'll never feel more at this. But uh, that's te my testimony, and um, thank y'all for listening. Um, I guess it's pretty strong.
it's, it, you try to, try to teach these and you, and especially when it gets saved in a video, it's a totally different world. When I've really talked about it before, uh, I can't imagine everything that's out there that they have to put up with and deal with uh, to be, to live a right life and be right in this case. It's, They, they do not give an invitation after worship because there's so many kids and they don't want 
They, and this is good, I agree with it. They don't want these youth making decisions based on emotion or because somebody else did it. And, and so right after worship, we're dismissed to our group devotion. And that's where we get along by ourselves, usually in a classroom, to talk about things, to kind of give an invitation, to, to just open up and share some things in our life. And we've had some great group devotions over the years where God has just moved and blessed. And man, those are some great memories. Some of the best memories of my Christian life. But this year, they didn't have us in the classroom. So the first night, they had us on some steps over here. And, and there was a cheerleader camp going on. One of the groups was over there. And by the time I would get really serious, they would jump off a rah rah re or something. And, and I'm like, oh, goodness, you know? And that's when I, the kids were watching me on a car go by or whatever. And I was grumbling to the staff all day, every day. Like, we need a classroom. This, surely this college campus would let us get in somewhere, you know? And, and they, they said it was a huge thing. It was a Mississippi college thing. They just they didn't want us in there. So uh, the next night was the same thing. We moved a little bit down, and we were still disrupted. And we just kept praying. So that, that Wednesday, I... I went out there today and I found us a place on the campus out. It's kind of like a park or, or whatever. And uh, it's a really pretty place. I said, we'll just, we'll just get out here on the ground. And uh, so that's where we met the next night. And we got along. Uh, we tried to move some benches they had, but they were concreted down. So we just sat on the ground. And, uh, and God began to move. And I mean, He moved. And, uh, so then Thursday night, uh, like Ray said, I, I told him, I said, just go. Whoever your roommate, whoever I, I chose to be your roommate, y'all go get along out here on this campus. And of course, it's nighttime, it's late. And I said, just honestly look each other in the eyes and say, hey, are you saved? You know you're saved. And, uh, and I'll just talk about that for a little bit, and I'm going to come around and uh, pray with y'all. And so that's what I did. I, I went to the first group, which was Carly and, and Bree, and I knelt down in front of them, and Carly said, they y'all got saved today. And so... We prayed about that. We rejoiced. Man, I was pumped up. I went to Stephen and Alex. And, and as soon as I got there, Stephen said, uh, Brother Dejo, uh, Alex needs to get saved. He, he, he's not saved. He wants to get saved. And so I explained the gospel to Alex and, and we prayed with him. And he got born again right there. And I went to another group and prayed with them. And uh, went to Brady's group and him and Philip and Aiden. And uh, got to talking. And, and Brady looked at me and I said, Daddy, I need to get saved. And so I asked them two boys to, to step over to the side and I led my son to the Lord right there. That was good. And uh, before it was all over, uh, we, we dismissed that night and Carson Kennedy grabbed me by the arms and Dejo said, uh, I think Aubrey needs to talk to you. And so she said that uh, she had heard something the night before in her room and, and Aubrey was crying and didn't write to God in her room. And, and so Aubrey came and she got saved. So we had four at camp get saved. We come back and Aiden gets saved. And, and Philip makes known that he had been saved the night of his wreck and he wants to be baptized. So we had six of our young people saved. And what I thought was going to be a no slow, dreadful week at camp. Here's the neat part about that. Those kids on campus that were getting saved at night, they had no idea the other kids were getting saved. They, nobody did it because somebody else did it. You know see what I'm saying? They were alone. That would never have happened in a classroom. And so God knew what He was doing the whole time. And I was just a grumbling and mumbling. But I got up. I was man enough to get up the last day and tell the, the people and the staff, hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> God knew what He was doing the whole time. And He just moved and blessed in a mighty way. Uh, I wouldn't be able to talk about Kemp this year without mentioning one of the guys that went. He's not here tonight, but his name is Cameron. It's Brother Gerald and Miss Sue's grandson. Uh, like I said, this is probably my 15th or 16th camp. I, I, there's no telling how many kids I've hauled on a bus to camp. But of all the kids I've ever taken, nobody got more out of camp than Cameron. Uh, he had a ball. He soaked it up. I'll never forget, the first day we got there, we were unloading, unpacking, and he just comes running into my room. I said, what is it? And he said, Brady's over there hanging out the window. His whole body's hanging out the window. He's hollering at people. <laughs> I said, well, what, what, who's he hollering at? He's, he's hollering all these buses pulling up and all these other churches getting here. And I said, well, what did he say? He said, well, a bus from Alabama pulled up. He just went to holler and go Tigers and go Tigers. <laughs> I said, well, I've taught him to do that. <laughs> but, uh, 
Cameron didn't quite understand the spirit of things until we hit. He, he caught on fast, and uh, man, we had a good time. And uh, I just can't say enough for thank yous to the church. And we didn't have to wash any cars or sell spaghetti or, or any of that. Uh, God's been good. There's people in this church who give to our youth group liberally, and I thank you. You know who you are. And uh, that means a lot to me because I'm 50 years old. I'm too old to wash cars. And, uh, but, uh, these guys are special to me. And uh, they're going to be leading this church one day. There's going to be some deacons in there, some deacon wives, maybe a preacher or two. And uh, hey, I'm excited to see what God's going to do with them. And I thank this church for supporting our youth group, and you have for many years. And I think that's what sets us apart from some of the other churches, is that we support our youth group. And I appreciate it. So, uh, at this time, we turn it back on to Brother Ruth. All right. Y'all give me about 45 minutes. I'm finished. <laughs> I want to say to you, Brother David, thank him for all the work that he does. He's as good as it gets. And he's 16 ounces to the pound, and his youth group is a reflection of, of the character that he's got. And uh, it, it's a blessing as a pastor to have a youth director that you don't ever have to worry about going off, except maybe something over Alabama football or fried chicken. He, other than that, he ain't going to get no kind of trouble. Uh, but I'm really proud of that youth group too, man. They, they have well represented our church. Uh, because it's like Kevin brought the line. They are the church. They, they are any Iowa Baptist church as much as anybody in the room tonight. And, uh, and we're thankful for them. And uh, Philip, son, you did a tremendous job sharing that story. And I, I thank you. And, uh, and Brady, yours wasn't sad, but it was good. I'm proud of y'all. I guarantee you. Man, I, I, I'm excited to, to see what the Lord's going to do. I don't want to rush you up, no, uh, none, but I, I do want to see how the Lord's going to use y'all in, in the years ahead. Y'all uh, David calls you knuckleheads, but I'm proud of you. Uh, I, I thank the Lord for that. I, I'll tell you what we're going to do, and then we're going to uh, get to the next phase of the service, which is where we get these that have been saved, and we've got several more that weren't on, on the camp trip, and several more that have been saved that are going to come back and be baptized tonight. But before we do that, I think we would be uh, remiss if we didn't give you an opportunity uh, to respond to what we've heard here tonight. And so, uh, Brother Ross, if you've got something kind of in mind, maybe you and Miss Wanda could come. You know how we do. We own this altar. And if you wanted to come tonight, uh, if you needed to be saved, you know, you never can tell. Brother right? Dave talked about how getting out in that field was, was different uh, rather than being in a classroom. But God's got an interesting way of using stuff. Uh, and a lot of times, you think your big power preaching will do it. And it'll be a testimony of somebody in a youth group, or it'll be something in a song, or something somebody else. I've had people come to me before that were moved by something somebody else said while they were leading in prayer. They just burned their heart and brought them down. So what we're going to do is give you an opportunity, an invitation. Uh, if you need to come tonight, I'm going to step down here and I'm going to invite, while we do this, the candidates for baptism. If you want to make your way back and start getting ready, uh, you can do that. But for anybody that's not responding, if you're here tonight, maybe you need to be saved or something you need to do, uh, we want you to do that. And if y'all don't mind staying with me uh, while we do this, if you need to come tonight, you come. Uh, and then we'll sit you back down and do some baptizing and go to dinner. Amen. Amen. You need to come. You come. If for any reason you need to come pray tonight, we'll be glad to pray for whatever it means.